All right, it's a new day and we have a new problem before us. The insert interval problem, we're still considering the, uh, the merge intervals pattern. And so let's get to it. We can spend all the time reading this statement, uh, but this image does justice to it. So you notice you're given as existing intervals uh, start of start and end times, and you have this new interval. And your job is to place it within here and merge as necessary. So 1 and 3, 2, 6, 5, 7 becomes what you see down here because uh, 2 and 6 make these two to merge and become this. I hope that's clear. 2 and 5 cause 5 ends before 6 starts, so it just extends this big guy. And that becomes 1 and 5, and this becomes 6 and 9. And to see if we understand it, we can merge, we can go through this example where we have this existing interval uh, 1, 3, 4, 5, 7, 8, 9, two, nine 12, etc. We have 2 and 6. You notice 2 would fit in here, but 10 it fills up everything up until here. So 1 and 3 and 9 and 12 will become 1 and 12, and then 13 and 14, uh, like this. And boom, we understand. And the same thing applies here, 4 and 8. You can see it somewhere here, actually. So these three will become, will merge as a result. So we have 1, 2, 3, 10, and 12, 16. And so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. Doesn't merge with anything. And then 1 and 10. It's going to get 1 and 10. And that's all. And so I usually don't take my time with these things because I know this, they're not as, over time with more difficult solutions, they're not very useful for understanding the algorithm. I think it's noteworthy, this last case, where uh, we have something where it just swallows the whole thing up. That's an interesting edge case, potential edge case, that, that perhaps solving it for the main case would automatically handle, but it remains to be seen. So iterate through the existing intervals, append all intervals occurring before the new interval to the, to the list. Mm -hmm. You can pause and read this if you want. Uh, what's more important for me is to look through the solution and step through it with a debugger. Uh, um, not even a naive solution, honestly. Just look at the optimized one. So you have a new output array. It's going to contain everything. So this is what's going to hold everything. And this diagram is not as high quality as the other diagrams, but that's OK. So we have 6 and 8. We start off always by putting the first thing in there uh, as the starting point. So because we do it because its starting point is less than the starting point of the interval to be added. So because one is less than six, unlike in the other case we had, we start off by putting that in there, okay? Three ends before six, okay, we, can, we verify that. Next, we add 5 and 7 to the output array. And we need to verify that it doesn't end before the start of the interval to be added. Uh, in this case, it does. Yeah. Or does it? Um, the current interval is 5 and 7. It does not end. It ends at 7 before the start of the interval to be added. No, it doesn't end before 6. We do verify that. And we know that it needs to be merged. So we just merge that. And then there's no more overlap. So we add this. Um, while the step-by-step -step reconst reconstruction is cute, um, I don't think it's super important to walk through at this time. What's more important, especially in light of the last solution we have, is to just step through the code and see how all of this makes sense. 
which is exactly what I will be doing now. So I have the code, I copy pasted it and commented it uh, accordingly. What I want to do is typescriptify it. So I'm given existing intervals and an interval array, an array of intervals. Then I have a new interval, which is just an interval, it's not an array. Um, existing intervals has a length. Okay, because the output doesn't know. The output is going to be an interval array as well. And TypeScript isn't yelling anymore. All this code will be available on the GitHub. Uh, what we want to do next is create some breakpoints. Um, usually at the branches. Uh, I'd like to do that. This one, another one here. That should be enough to understand everything that's going on in this piece of code. Now I'm, I'll set up the debugger. Not on this video, I'll pause and cut to when we're stepping through the code because we just want to internalize what exactly the function is doing and not bother too much about the ancillaries of setting up debuggers and like and the like. Remember, an educative idea keeps on employment away. All right, let's step through the code. With our debugger. Um, watch a few variables. See what exactly is going on here. This is everything, pretty much. This is everything from line three to line 54. And lots of comments in between. Uh, let's get to it. So we have this function, insert interval, it takes these two arguments, the existing interval array and new interval. This is what the existing interval looks like in our current example. Uh, these are the start various start and end times. Uh, these are the start. This is what we want to add to this interval. And this is our current output. Uh, we define the output here. We're taking new start, this five, like you can see down here, five, and new end, which is currently seven. And first of all, appending all intervals that start before the new interval, so all the intervals that start before this guy, before five and seven, to the output list. So we expect after this branch for the output list to look like what? Um, everything that starts before. So one, two, three, and five should be in the output list at the end of this while loop. Let's verify. So one and two is in right now. Um, I don't want to see this. Three and five is in right now. This is annoying. The fact that this keeps opening up. Wish I could make it stop. One second. All right, I fixed the annoying thing that was making this tab keep opening. So let's step through the code again from the start. Uh, and by the way, I fixed that by just changing this setting in VS Code. Open debug, set it to never open. Um, so it wants to append all intervals to start. So a call came through. Um, let's resume. Uh, like I said, this is gonna do what this comment says, append all intervals that start before the new interval to the output list. So everything that starts before uh, this, before five, is gonna be in the output list. And as a result, one and two, one starts before five, so it's gonna go in there. Three starts before five, it's gonna go in there. Six isn't though. So I expect the output list to have one, two, and three, five after this breaks so you can pay attention to the base see how it's changing uh-huh and then three and five then it breaks All right next if the new interval starts after the end so the new interval uh that's a five seven if it starts after the end of the last interval appended to the output list that's three and five if it starts after the end 
just append it to the to the output list. So this 5.7 doesn't start after. There's an overlap there. So this if statement shouldn't run. Instead, the else statement should run. Otherwise, merge the two intervals. And that's exactly what we're going to do. We take the last thing in the output interval, 3 and 5. And it's end, so 5. And we find out what's bigger between 7 and 5. And we change it to that larger value. So I expect 3 and 5 to this to change to 7 after this. And that's exactly what happens because now they're merged. We then copy any remaining intervals to the output list. Okay? Anything that remains, copy to the output list because we've merged what we need to merge. Uh, similarly, merging any overlapping intervals as we go. So i is at 2, n is 3. It's already it's still less than three. So just take, basically take six and eight and add it to this. That's what's going to happen. We can step through it one by one. So now we have EI. Uh, I want to see what EI is, basically. So I'm going to just say EI dot format interval. See, six and eight. So it's going to take start six, which is going to be six, actually. So the start is 6 and is 8. So uh, merge it as necessary. There is no overlap. So, oh, actually, there is overlap. How about that? Huh. 6 and 8 is actually going to overlap with this. So it's going to be 3 and 8, oddly enough. So um, this says there's no overlap. No overlap. This is a case where there is no overlap. However, here there is an overlap. There is overlap. Um, so I need to. I don't know why this is unwrapped in curly braces. I don't know. I don't know why these calls keep coming through. But there's overlap here. Okay. Breakpoints are broken because of everything. But I hope you, I trust you get the point. Because 3 and 8 are going to merge again, similar, similar to what happened here, exactly what happened here. And then we are done. And voila, that's it. That's the end of that. Thank you for watching. See you next time.